Maria and I love The Sound of Music. It was one of our favorite movies growing up, and I think we pretended that we were like the Von Trapp family because my parents sang and played guitar, and my sister and I sing too. So we love it. There was this like running joke that because Maria was such a problematic child and had her dark side, her black sheep side, we would always walk around singing, how do you solve a problem like Maria? And she's like, stop it, I hate you guys. I'm like, seriously, we don't know what to do with you. And that's how we felt for a lot of our growing up period was like, what do we do with her? How are we gonna make this happen? And I think she's just such a great example of what do you do when you're non-traditional? You know, what can you do? And it's really, you can do anything. And she set her mind to it and she's built this amazing career for herself that's non-traditional, but it works. It works for Maria and uh, I don't think she's that much of a problem anymore. <laughs>
shave our eyebrows off and draw them in. Uh, we would do like the really dark lip liner with like no lipstick. My parents had to come to the principal's office one too many times and maybe there was a trip to the police station in there. Maria was definitely the rebellious child. She was the black sheep of the family. One time she ran away for over a month and then she called us finally and said, I will come home, but on these conditions. So she gave us conditions so that she would return back to, to us. Knowing that their daughter was going down the wrong path in life, Maria's parents decided to send her off to private school. I actually grew up Catholic, uh, but I had never been around so many nuns in my life. I mean, the principal there was a nun. All my, most of my teachers were nuns. Um, and I had to actually live there. So the people that were the uh, dorm keepers at the place were also nuns, because uh, all the nuns lived there together. And so it was uh, quite the uh, experience to go from living at home and being a regular teenager to basically having other people look after you who weren't your parents and also, you know, were nuns. <laughs> Honestly, I, if I did not end up going to an all-girls Catholic high school, I probably wouldn't have even graduated high school. And so looking back, I'm really glad that my parents made me go to, um, because then I had to focus on my studies again and I really didn't have anywhere to rebel um, or any people to rebel with. With her life's path set straight, Maria went on to attend the University of California, San Diego. She was studying psychology with thoughts of going on to medical school when a card game would set her on another strange journey. I had some guy friends and they were like, yeah, we're gonna have a poker night. And I was like, oh, what, like what kind of game? And they were like, oh, Texas Hold'em. My friends didn't really invite me <laughs> to their game, but I was like, I wanna learn how to play. Uh, so I showed up with some beer and, you know, when you're a broke college kid, you can't really say no to free beer, so they let me play. The first night that I played poker, I mean, I clearly had no idea what I was doing, but somehow I managed to win. And so, of course, from that point forward, I was like, oh my God, this is my calling. Not only was Maria hooked on poker, she quickly moved on from the occasional low stakes dorm room games in search for more action. On days where my classes ended early, I would just drive down to my local casino and I could play poker whenever I want for, you know, 24 hours a day if I wanted to. And, um, you know, it was just something that I did for fun, but then I noticed I was starting to make some money on the side doing it. So I was like, hmm, maybe there is something to this. When Maria Ho played and won her first hand of poker in college, she became obsessed. I won the first time that I played, obviously not knowing what I was doing at all, but that gives you a lot of confidence and makes you think like, oh, I'm the best poker player ever. I remember she would skip class and go play poker and she would kind of tell me about it, but not really. She wouldn't tell me how serious she was. She would just say, I'm going with some friends to go play uh, cards at Indian casinos. Maria was not fully honest with her sister about how much poker was consuming her life. And it was a secret she would not dare tell her parents. Maria wanted to make this her actual career. And I think that's why she didn't really tell us because in traditional Chinese culture, um, it's not as acceptable to go down a path that's pretty much a totally unknown path. You know, I think traditional Chinese culture, they really want you to utilize the opportunities you've been given, go on a consistent path where there is more chance for success. I had decided that I was definitely gonna finish college. I didn't want to, you know, quit in the middle of my education to play poker or to, to pursue something else. Um, but I always kind of had it in the back of my mind that I wanted to maybe take a year off school between undergrad and going to grad school to kind of just have fun and poker was something that I could make money doing and I could travel the world and it just seemed like a fun proposition for someone right out of college. Uh, so basically I graduated with the intention of playing in the World Series of Poker that year and I basically uh, walked to my college graduation, got on a plane, flew to Vegas and played in my uh, very first WSOP event that year. Maria did not do well in her first World Series of Poker, 
so she went back to Los Angeles to continue to grind and learn the game. She also knew it was time to come clean to her parents about her little secret. I think at some point I had to let them know that I wasn't, you know, gonna go get my master's degree right away. And so when my mom was like, well, what are you gonna do for money? I kind of told her that, you know, in college, I was like, you know how you kind of asked me how I was like going on trips or like over the weekend and doing all these fun things? Yeah, so that was from poker. My parents told me all the time that I had to stop her from playing more poker. And they would tell her too, but obviously she, didn't really listen to them. And I remember many conversations where my mom or my dad would say, Maria listens to you, you're closer to her. Maybe you should tell her that she should invest in something else. Maybe she could go to law school. That only takes three years. Maria was determined to make poker her career. And the next year, she went back to the World Series of Poker to play in the main event. I had been playing professionally for a year and a half at that point. The thing about poker, or probably about a lot of things, is you always think you're better than you actually are. So at that time, I think I was okay, and I think that I thought that I was great, but confidence has a huge part to play in the fact that I did well, I think. At some point, they would be announcing, like, there's three women left in the tournament, there's two women left. And a part of me didn't really even like that because I felt like we're, I was competing against everybody, not just the women. But they made such a big deal of it that it kind of just put it in your head like, oh wait, how many women are there left? In kind of the modern era of poker, since poker, since like Chris Moneymaker and kind of these really big fields that we're used to seeing with thousands upon thousands of people playing the main event, weirdly enough, no woman has ever made the final table. ESPN likes to track all of the women that do really well and they have a thing called Last Woman Standing, which is the last woman that, you know, kind of busts out of the World Series Poker Main event. And I, I knew there was just me and this other woman, and she was actually at the table across from me, and I remember her getting up from my, her seat, and I looked over, and we kind of had a camaraderie, so I actually felt bad that she got knocked out. And then they get on the microphone, they're like, oh, and the last woman standing of the 2007 World Series of Poker Main event is Maria Ho. And, uh, and then people started applauding. It was like, its own competition within a competition. It was a little bit weird for me, it was strange, um, but as far as, you know, being able to show other women that, you know, we could do well in the main event, I loved the fact that, you know, they can highlight that um, because it's positive for bringing other women into the game. So now just one woman left in the main event, Maria Ho. I know. We're talking about outlasting a field of like 6,000 people. You know, unfortunately for her, she didn't make it all the way to the final table, but she got really far. I mean, that's really impressive. I cashed for over a quarter million dollars, and, uh, you know, people made a big deal because I think they're always like, oh, who's this new person on the scene that we've never really heard of before? It wasn't even until I got home from the tournament that I got knocked out, you know, got paid, and I went back to L.A. that I told my parents what had happened. When I br brought home all this money, they didn't even, you know, blink at that. They were just like, oh, you want it playing poker? Okay, so you've had your fun now. Like, you played poker, you won some money, and so now you could actually go back and do what you're really supposed to do, which is not poker. Maria Ho got her birthday wish with a big double up. Maria could have taken the money and her parents' advice and walked away from the tables. But she won more than cash at the World Series of Poker. She won over people with influence and fresh opportunities. I didn't realize at that point in time what being the last one standing meant and also, you know, getting 38th in the main event uh, would mean in terms of uh, for any professional poker player. It wasn't until, you know, a few months after and I was, you know, getting a lot of people coming up to me and people offering me, you know, there were a lot of sponsorship deals, there were a lot of different opportunities. My entire life, I've always been one to, you know, try anything and to be open to anything. And so I think I really just grabbed the bull by the horns in that situation. and was like, okay, anything that comes my way, I'm going to say yes to. I'm going to do it, and we'll see where this takes me. But what Maria did not know was that with all new adventures, there comes the good and the bad. As the World Series of Poker's last woman standing, Maria Ho had earned not only attention, but endorsement deals and cold, hard cash. But one bad decision 
could bring it all crashing down. Yeah, uh, so I was doing well myself in poker, but I was actually dating another poker player that wasn't doing well, and so um, I basically gave my boyfriend at the time my bankroll to play with, and he lost it all. And so we were both broke at that point. Well, I think it got to a point where I could either just give up and uh, go back to school, go back to my parents, my tail between my legs and be like, you guys are right. Or I could just rebuild, start over. Um, and I chose to do what I think is the harder thing, which is rebuild and start over, because I still felt like I had more to prove to myself and to other people um, in terms of my poker career. So I didn't want to give up. Maria's drive and determination paid off at the tables. And at the 2011 World Series of Poker, Maria would win her second last woman standing. The main event is basically the pinnacle, the most prestigious event in poker. And to be the last woman standing, the probability that that would happen is just so astronomically low. But when you're as good of a poker player as Maria is, I wouldn't be surprised if she does it again. Maria also learned that to survive in the world of poker, you need good friends you can lean on during hard times. Her confidant would become fellow poker player Tiffany Michelle. And that summer, she and I were both going through breakups. So I was hosting, she was playing, and kind of during every like dinner or lunch break, we would both see each other in the hallway and say like, oh, hey, you wanna grab a bite? Cause all the guys, you know, have their click and do things together. But when you're a girl at the World Series by yourself, I was kind of looking for, you know, some women to hang out with and to befriend some women in the industry. So we quickly became friends. That year, I was the last woman standing at the main event and she had left Vegas at the point that I started making my deep run because she had busted the main, but she actually flew back out to come sweat me once I started making it deep. And I just remember like looking up in the stands and I think I remember the day she flew in, I looked up and I was like, oh my God, here's Maria. How crazy is this experience that she was the last one standing, now here I am. That was the start of Maria and Tiffany. Lifelong soulmates, best friends who have found each other on this planet and um, have become quite the duo. Soon, the dynamic duo of Maria Ho and Tiffany Michelle were being courted for adventures outside of the poker room. And then this whole opportunity to be on The Amazing Race came along. If you're signing up to do, you know, a 30-day, the most intense race around the world of your life, you don't want to just do that with, you know, anybody. You have to, you know, know that you're with somebody that you want to do that kind of challenge with. So Tiffany Michelle and Maria Ho were teammates on The Amazing Race and you got to see that friendship that they have firsthand. We just thought like what better way to kind of challenge ourselves and also because we are so competitive than to do it on a show like Amazing Race which it's you know the adventure of a lifetime but we both know that the other person is willing to do whatever it takes to win. Maria and Tiffany didn't win first place but the challenge certainly made its mark. I think that Amazing Race will go down as the best experience I've ever had because I think that you think that you're able to do a lot more than you might be able to, but you never really get tested. We've had you know pretty comfortable lives. We haven't had to do something that's that crazy hard. I've been tested and I know what I'm capable of and I feel like there's nothing that I can't do because of my experience on the race. Three times named Last Woman Standing at the World Series of Poker. Maria Ho proved she belongs in the pantheon of poker deities. And more than a player, Maria was now an ambassador to the game she once had to hide from her own family. An opportunity came up in poker where they were looking for a female strategic analyst on a poker show. I didn't even know how I would do, but once again, you know, I, I don't really back down from challenges and I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna give it a try and I'll see how it goes. And uh, I guess it worked out really well because I was the strategic commentator on the Heartland Poker Tour for two seasons. With Maria's poker knowledge and ever-growing popularity, it's easy to see why she was recruited to be a team manager for the inaugural season of the Global Poker League. It's you know been a really big honor for me to be asked to be a manager of one of the inaugural um, teams. And 
I love the idea of making poker more of a team sport because I think that's what's been missing is to feel more of a camaraderie because so often you're just playing against people that are your friends. But for once, you know, you guys, everybody's decision making affects the other person. So I think, um, you know, it's been an awesome experience so far. Because she's still young and exuberant and has so much to share, I think she really inspires other people to see this as a serious career path and that other people can do it too. So I think she's really inspirational to the, uh, the next generation. I would tell every up and coming young female poker player, you know, watch Maria Ho and, 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 the, and if you have that attitude right there and can learn the game too, then no telling what you can do in the game. Maria Ho is so intelligent, so well spoken, not only a terrific player, but a TV host, a commentator, and you know, she is just, I don't care what profession she would have chosen, the poker world should be so grateful that she chose poker as a profession. Because whatever career she would have chosen, she would have been extremely successful because she's extremely intelligent. It's always been really important to you know, take pride in what I'm doing. And so I want to represent this game well because not only will it bring more people to the game, but it'll also validate what I've spent you know, 11 years of my life doing for a living. I know I'm a good poker player. I deserve to be here and I'm going to do everything to show people that, but I'm gonna keep my head down and I'm gonna do the work and I'm gonna let my results speak for themselves.